Hey guys, it's Katie. Welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to be doing a New Year's Q&A slash answering your most frequently asked questions. If somehow you're new here and this is the first video of mine that you're seeing, welcome. Hi, my name is Katie. I asked you guys to send me over questions, both in the comments of a video and then also on my Instagram stories. So if you're not already following me on Instagram, you should do that. It's just at Kate's Book Date. I do a lot of interactive videos over there, including Q and A's. And I figured I would also take this opportunity to answer the questions that I get in the comments on almost every single video and just knock out the frequently asked questions. <laughs> Hopefully this will be helpful to you. If I reference any particular thing, I'll have a link for it down below in the description. So you can just check down there for any more information that you think you need. But other than that, thank you for sending in your questions and let's get straight into them. Let's start with the frequently asked questions. So number one, what are you holding? In every video, this is my favorite energy drink. They are from the company Alani New. They're vegan, low sugar, only 10 calories for a can. And I personally can't do energy drinks. They give me headaches. These are the only ones I've ever been able to drink in my entire life. I really, really like them. I'll have a link down below for them if you wanna check them out. If you want a flavor suggestion, I like the cotton candy grape the rainbow candy, and the sour peach rings. Number two, whenever I say I have something going up on my Patreon page, I always get DMs saying, is this also going up on YouTube? Every time, without fail, which is totally fine. Valid question. So first of all, if you didn't know, I have a Patreon page. I'll have a link down below. I do a monthly book club over there. We all read a book, have a live show discussion. I post almost all of my YouTube videos early on there if they're ready early. And then I also do bonus content on there, videos that will never be on this channel. But the majority of the videos on there are just my YouTube videos. They just go up a day or two early. So if you want to be the first person to see them, you can see them on there. But yes, the usual question is, will this be on YouTube? Also 90% of the time, yes. But like the book club live shows and stuff, no, that's only on Patreon. Question number three, what do you do for work? Or can you talk about your work? Or can you explain more of what you do? I'll give you a very quick outline here, but I actually have several videos talking about this. I'll link them down below, but I am a freelance writer and editor. I do beta reading for people. I edit books. I'm a writer myself. I have a book out called The Sweetest Kind of Poison. It's a poetry collection if you want to check it out. I do YouTube, obviously. I also nanny and then I teach English to kids online in China. Another question I always get is like, what equipment do you use? What do you use for this, this, this? For basically everything. So for my lighting, I sit by a window and I do have a ring light here to kind of balance it out. I'll have the specific ring light that I use down below if you're curious. And then I use the Canon 70D camera and I have two different lenses, one for sit down videos like this one and then one for vlogging. My vlogging one is more of a wide angle lens, which helps a lot. And then I have an external microphone and then I have a tripod. I'll have all of those linked down below. I actually really love all of my equipment. I've had it all for over three years now, except for the extra lens and the microphone I added later on, but they've all lasted me a really long time. So if you're looking to upgrade your equipment, I would really recommend all the stuff I have. I really, really like it. But if you're new and you're just getting into YouTube, I wouldn't recommend investing in really expensive equipment. Get into your groove, making your videos first and worry about the equipment later. I started filming on my iPhone, which I think was like an iPhone 6 at the time. So use whatever you have. Where's your notebook from? I get that a lot. This is the notebook that I use to write my to-do lists in every morning. It's from Barnes & Noble. If I can find this specific one, I'll link it down below. I know they still make this style. I don't know if they have this specific design, but yeah, it's from Barnes & Noble. And then perhaps the most popular question ever since I moved in here, why on earth are your books facing backwards? And how do you find your books if they're faced like that? How do you organize them if they're like that? All of those questions. Why are they facing backwards? There's no reason. I just like the way they look. It gives the room, I don't know, a more black and white feel. These, as you can see, are not backwards. There's also no reason for why those are and those aren't, except this is my favorite shelf and I like the books on here. How do you find books on here? It's pretty easy, actually. When I was filming my favorite books of the year video, I really had to put that to the test when I went to go find the books, but I found them all really easily. This is my red shelf. So I've read every single book on this shelf. I've had most of these for a really long time. So just looking at like the colors on the sides, the height about how big it is, I can pretty much tell which book is which. It's not very hard, but again, I've read all of these, so I don't really have a reason to take them out very often. And they're not even organized. They're not in alphabetical order. The series aren't even in an order. Literally when I moved in here and I had all of those books in my boxes and stuff, I just started picking them up and shoving them on the shelf. They are in no particular order, nor do I care. <laughs> they will stay like that. So there's no reason, there's no secret, there's no organization. I just like the way they look and it was easier to unpack them that way. I think those are all of the most frequently asked questions I get. Now I'm gonna go over to your specific questions on Instagram. And as always, if you have a question, 
that I didn't answer in this video, feel free to ask it down below in the comments and I'll answer some more down there. This is cute. The first question is, just adopted a boy cat. Any name suggestions? I'm assuming by now you've named him. So tell me down in the comments if you're watching this, what did you name him? I'm curious. I just adopted two cats if you didn't know. So this is relevant. Originally, my plan was to get a little black cat and he was gonna be a boy and I was gonna name him Bear. So I would recommend Bear. And then I also almost named my cats Klaus and Caroline, so I would recommend Klaus. What situation made you the most anxious this year and it turned out fine in the end? I like this question. I don't have a good answer for it though because everything makes me anxious. I'm just a very anxious person. Probably was, because I graduated college in May, I was the most anxious about graduating and finding a job. And I found a job and I started working literally like two days after I graduated. And that job ended up not being for me. I'm not still working for that company. I now work from home for myself for the most part. So all of that anxiety and worry was for nothing because it all worked out in the end, so not the way that I thought it was going to, but I'm perfectly happy now. What's your New Year's resolution? Then another question was, what are your goals for 2020? I just put up an entire video about all of my goals for 2020 related to my YouTube channel, writing, reading, my personal life, everything like that. I'll have a link down below. How can you become an online teacher? I get this question a lot too. I'll link the company that I work for down below in the description, but it's just like any other job. You just have to go research them and apply. Do you like traveling? Where would you like to go? Yes and no. I like traveling in theory, but I love routines and habits and my space and I hate living out of a suitcase and I hate having to pack up all of my stuff and I hate like not having all of my things where I like them to be. So I find traveling extremely inconvenient, but I do like going new places. Um, there were a couple of places in Europe that I didn't get to while I was over there when I was studying abroad. So I never made it to France and I really wanted to go there. I never made it to Wales and I really wanted to go to Wales. I haven't been to Italy, like a bunch of places in Europe that I just didn't end up getting to. And I went to Sweden three years ago. Oh my gosh, four years ago. I don't even know. It was a while ago. And that's my favorite place to date that I've ever been. So I would love to go back. What genre have you written the most of? What genre do you most enjoy writing? This is funny. If you guys are writers, tell me if you've had a similar experience or if you've always known what kind of genre you want to write. I feel like I've written at least one book in every single genre, starting from when I was like 12 years old, because I was just experimenting. I just wanted to try something new every single time. So I have at least one book in every single genre and I've definitely found ones that I think are easier than others, but I don't have a preference. Weirdly enough, my favorite genre to read is thriller, but I don't gravitate towards writing thrillers just because I don't think I'd be very good at it. But I do lean more towards writing young adult, new adult kind of stuff. Are you planning to travel anywhere in 2020? I would love to. That was one of my goals for the year is to travel somewhere, but I don't know where. How's it going with your cats, Max and Dean? Very good, very good. We're all very happy. I was worried a little bit about them transitioning and getting used to being here, but they get along with each other so well and they're just already so comfortable here. It was kind of like a seamless transition. If you had to pick just one favorite book of all time, the Unbecoming of Mara Dyer by Michelle Hodkin. How do you like being a cat mama in your new place? I love it, I'm so happy. The cats are so nice to have around. It's just constant company, I'm never lonely. They like to follow me everywhere. Honestly, I'm surprised neither of them are in this room right now. I think they're asleep. They're nice to have around and I really like having my own place again. It, I'm not gonna lie, I love my family and I was really lucky that they let me live with them for about six months after I graduated while I saved up money. But going from living on my own for four years back to living with my parents was really hard. Um, didn't enjoy it just because I like having my own space and I was so used to being on my own. So having my new place, it just, it feels right. And it feels like, I don't know, like I'm back at college. Like I have my own space again. I desperately need it. Oh, here's one that should have been in the frequently asked questions. What's your end song? The song title is Control and it's by the artist Hyrule. Name three nostalgic reads, basically books you read as a kid. Okay, I'm gonna try and pick like way, way back like kids books. The Katie Kazoo Switcheroo books I read because of the name Katie. I read the Magic Treehouse books, obviously. And I read all of the Pretty Little Liars books in middle school, I think around seventh grade. Um, I never read the continued books after she kept like expanding the series, but I read, I wanna say the first 10 of those. What motivated you to go vegan and what challenges have you faced in respect to it? Talked about this, I have a whole video on it. I can link it down below on why I went vegan. And what challenges have you faced? Honestly, none of them have to do with like being vegan and they all have to do with other people's reactions to being vegan. The challenges are just, honestly, people are rude. <laughs> People are really disrespectful. And suddenly when you go vegan, everyone around you becomes a dietitian and they know everything about nutrition. I think it's so funny. Um, everyone thinks they know more than you do about your diet. I've become a lot more patient in the last four years. It's taught me to be a lot more patient. And people, people are trying to be funny. And 
after you've heard the jokes like a million times, it's just not funny and you just have to be like, yeah, okay. I want to get a cat, but I'm scared ever since I got scratched badly by one tips to avoid this. With any animal, they will show you if they don't like something. So just learning to read the animal's signals, like if they tell you to back off, like back off, like respect their space and their autonomy. Like sometimes they don't want to be pet. Sometimes they don't want to be picked up. Don't force them to do anything that they don't want to do. If you respect them, they're not going to scratch you. Just learn to read their body language. Will there be a new upload to your second channel? I know it's been a while. Yes eventually, yes. Um, the second channel, if you didn't know, I have a second YouTube channel where I post non-bookish stuff. Definitely have plans to keep posting over there. It's just the one thing in my life that I didn't want to feel like I needed to be stressed about or have a schedule for. So I'm just going to post videos over there when I have one that I'm excited about and I want to share. Something big or small that your followers don't know about you. An open book. I feel like you guys know everything. My hair's not naturally blonde. <laughs> Seems pretty obvious because of the roots, correct? I think so. But when I was in college, my freshman year of college, I had blonde hair and I dyed it back, I think halfway through my sophomore year to my regular like dark brown color and everyone was appalled. And they like literally called me Katie 2.0. They're like, you don't look like Katie. Like everyone was convinced I was naturally blonde. And I was just like, you could see my roots. Like my hair's not blonde. And since so many people had met me for the first time with blonde hair, so many people out there think my natural hair color is blonde and they will not let me convince them otherwise. How do you keep yourself so motivated and productive? You never seem to have lazy days. And then do you have any advice on becoming a morning person? You know, this is funny. I get this a lot. How do you keep yourself so motivated and productive? I really wish I could give good advice on this, but I've always just been so self-motivated ever since I was like five. I don't know where it came from. My family doesn't know where it came from. Like my parents never told me to do my homework or anything. And when I asked them why, like years later, they were like, we never needed to put like any pressure on you because you always put way too much on yourself. And in fact, they would be like, why don't you go get into some trouble? Like, why don't you go have some fun? Like stop being so good. So I honestly don't know where that comes from. But then the, you never seem to have lazy days thing. It depends on how you describe a lazy day. Cause I feel like people have lazy days to recharge and because they enjoy them. And the reason why I don't have what some people would consider what looks like a lazy day is because I don't enjoy lazy days. Just laying around doing nothing all day gives me anxiety, the idea of doing that. Like, because I like to be productive and I like to be accomplishing things. And so that's not um, relaxing to me. That's not how I recharge. So my like lazy day or my way that I kind of recharge is I do yoga. I go work out. I read a book. I honestly film videos. Like this kind of stuff is my lazy day stuff. These are the things that are fun for me. But then also I think a big part of it is I don't like feeling like I have a whole day gone where I haven't accomplished anything. So I'll have like lazy chunks of my days. Um, and you guys just don't see that because I don't include that in the vlog because it's not interesting footage. So I'll have like two or three hours where I just lay on the couch and watch Netflix until it asks me, are you still watching? Like I do that. I just don't do a whole day of it. And then do you have any advice on becoming a morning person? I didn't used to be a morning person and now I am 100% a morning person. So it all just comes down to is you have to realize that you're going to have to change a lot more than just the time that you're waking up. You have to change a lot of different behaviors. Obviously you have to go to bed earlier. I'm sorry, you have to. You have to change your routine before going to bed so you get a good night's rest. I would recommend having something in the morning that creates a little bit of that good stress. I took a class on this. Is, is it called you stress? Like you need some outside motivating force to make you get up at five in the morning. Like if I didn't teach classes at five in the morning, I would not be getting up at five in the morning because I wouldn't have a reason to. You need a reason to be getting up at the time that you're getting up. And then you need things that you enjoy doing in the morning. I love sunrises. And so I love going outside and going for a walk as the sun rises. I love having a cup of coffee and watching the news. So I do that every morning. I love doing my yoga in the morning. So I just have these things that I look forward to in the mornings. And that doesn't mean I jump out of bed when my alarm goes off at five o'clock. I tend to groan and lay there on my phone for at least 10 minutes and then force myself to get up. But then once I'm up and moving, I'm fine. It takes a little bit of self-discipline, but there are steps that you can do to become more of a morning person. But also don't try to get up at five in the morning, like two days. You feel really tired both days and then give up on it. Like even if I just stray from my normal sleeping schedule for like a weekend and wake up a little bit later for two days, when I go back to my normal sleep schedule on Monday, I feel tired the next day because I've screwed up my sleep schedule. So go to bed at the same time every night, wake up at the same time every morning. And once your body gets used to that, you're not going to feel that tired at five in the morning anymore. You're going to be used to waking up at that time. It's amazing what you can adjust to. In this question, there's like a million ones in here. 
and honestly I don't have answers to a lot of them so I'm gonna pick and choose. Do you have a bundle of book ideas to explore or are you just going to dedicate time to them as they unfold? I'm a go with the flow kind of person. I'm in the middle of writing two series so I feel like that's going to take up a lot of time for me and I don't have any ideas yet outside of either of those series but I'm not worried about it because I feel like when you look for ideas it's when you can't find them so whenever I'm just chilling and going about my life that's when I get my best ideas. What's your favorite TV movie adaptation of a book? 100% the TV show The Vampire Diaries. I tried to read the books. I freaking hate the books but that TV show is one of my all-time favorites. So yeah I'm gonna try not to let this video get super long because I feel like my last Q&A video was really long. So thank you guys so much for watching if you're still here this late in the video. If you're new here I would love it if you would subscribe. I put up at least two to three new videos every single week. If you like this video I'd appreciate it if you would give it a thumbs up. If you want to follow me elsewhere my links are down below in the description as well as links to everything that I talked about in this video. So thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you're having an awesome day and I will just see you in my next video very very soon. Bye. So hit me. Hit me. So hit me. First a confession. With you, I feel a connection. With